in late October, by, uh, UN Representative Adlai Stevenson goes to Dallas to give a speech on United Nations Day. And the radicals, anti-UN forces in Dallas, turn out in force to protest Stevenson. They hoot, they heckle, they howl at him. And as he's leaving the auditorium uh, to go to his car, he's spat at by demonstrators and even hit over the head by a cardboard placard carried by one of the demonstrators. This had a very large effect in Washington, and many people told Kennedy that he ought not to take that trip uh, that he had scheduled for, for late November because of the poisonous environment in Dallas. Of course, it's the kind of thing that I just discussed having occurred in Dallas was commonplace on college campuses just a few years later. Um, but this was an outrage that this had happened. So you have this narrative of violence coming out of the far right, the radical right, a danger to the country, opposed to the United Nations, opposed to civil rights, so on. Radicals. And Kennedy is shot. Uh, the word spread across the nation immediately that this was a right-wing job. Earl Warren, Chief Justice of the Supreme Court, says that afternoon that this was a, 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 an act that sprung out of the hatred that had been placed into the national bloodstream by bigots. And this was a very common theme throughout the period, uh, throughout that day. It made perfect sense uh, in terms of the narrative that had been established. Uh, here is, you can't read this, but I'll describe it to you. This, this is the New York front page of the New York Times of November 23, 1963, the day, day after. Kennedy is killed by sniper in Dallas. The middle article says, uh, leads by saying leftist accused. And it goes through all the facts, virtually all of which were subsequently reinforced about uh, this defector to the Soviet Union, Castro sympathizer who was arrested for the slain of President Kennedy. That would be one narrative. Adjacent to that, uh, below the photograph of Kennedy, uh, is a slightly different narrative developing. <clears throat> it's a, a column written by James Reston, the premier journalist, political journalist of the era, Why America Weeps, Kennedy victim of violent streak he sought to curb in the nation. And he said, America wept tonight, not only for its dead young president, but for itself. The grief was general, for somehow the worst in the nation had prevailed over the best. The indictment extended beyond the assassin for something in the nation itself, some st uh, strain of madness and violence had destroyed the highest symbol of law and order. And it goes on to uh, suggest that the irony of the president's death <clears throat> is that his short administration was devoted almost entirely to attempts to curb the streak of violence in the American character. When the historians get around to assessing his three years in office, <clears throat> it is very likely that they will be impressed with just this. His efforts to restrain those who wanted to be more violent in the Cold War overseas and those who wanted to be more violent in the racial war at home. This was a kind of second narrative that really American culture was responsible for the Kennedy assassination, that a violent streak in the nation, a sense of intolerance and bigotry, and certainly the, the, the sense of violence and bigotry concentrated in Dallas was responsible for Kennedy's death. This, however, was the, what I would call the civil rights narrative of the assassination. And I think this is the first time that I can locate that this sort of idea was turned loose into the culture. And then, of course, it became uh, predominant somewhat later. Um, so the Kennedy assassination was, in fact, an event in the Cold War. It was interpreted as an event in the Civil Rights Movement. 